Right back here, the Seth Williams Show, Chris Aiken uh, with me. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Scott Dietschy was good. I yes, absolutely. Uh, the second you asked about the government, his stream went crazy. They're watching everything. <laughs> I totally probably, agree. Probably true. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, from uh, one mob to another, the city of Lakewood, Charlie Kalani joins us. Charlie's auto repair in Lakewood, my good friend. Charlie, how are you, my friend? At least you can pronounce my last name. Yeah, see? <laughs> I got that. Down straight. That's what How you guys doing? My car nine thousand times, <laughs> <laughs> and then made it so I can drive it now. Find That's right. Every day with a yep. stick, trying to make myself go forward and stop, and I did all right. So just don't put anybody through the windshield. You'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> it does stop quick. I'm telling you, man. I'm gonna have to yeah. hold. I'm gonna have to like <laughs> do the stop short method on whoever I'm in the car with. <laughs> Sure <laughs> flying through because we just saw that episode the other night. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. So what's going on? You had a big problem. Explain to everybody first what's going on with the city of Lakewood and what's going on now with the city of Lakewood. So the city's trying to pass an ordinance that only affects automotive repair garages. Um, they say automotive uh, business operations, I believe is what they 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 call it at. Yeah, automobile business operations. But it's, it's directed at automotive repair facilities, um, namely mine, but uh, we'll get into that a little later. Uh, what they're trying to do here, they're trying to regulate normal operation of an automotive repair garage. Uh, in the first draft, they had all kinds of just crazy nonsense in there. Um, about not being able to, you know, about limiting spots on our own property, about um, trash, jail time, if you violated any part of it. Uh, I'd say since the first draft, they got rid of probably about 75% of the crap that was in there, the stuff that was just, you know, nobody could figure out. Uh, sewer water regular you know stuff that they wanted us to tear up our sewer lines and put separators in there and stuff um now they made a new draft and it's better but unfortunately there's still 90 percent of it or i'm sorry 99 percent of it there's there's one thing in there that i that i you know appreciate it that they tried to uh make make a concession on or, or actually looks like they actually tried to work with us on and the rest of it is just bad law uh and i'd say unconstitutional and illegal and valid at that um one of the the, the key sticking points here the, the first problem i have is that they're still trying to push this permit to operate hang on one second there we go they're trying to push this permit to operate and the problem I have with that is the conditions or the guidelines for the longest time, nobody could tell me what they were. And the best answer that I've been able to come up with is that they want to make sure that we have readily accessible building capacity in order to determine if we're allowed to continue to operate or not. Well, I don't know what the guy, you know, what are the guidelines? Who defines what this is? So now the city wants me to pay them $150 every year for them to come in here in inside our property. Uh, and if we don't let them in, they don't give us a permit. And then they're going to use what the inside of the property looks like to gauge whether or not we should be allowed to operate. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure, first of all, we've been in operation in this location for over 50 years. Right. Uh, my dad started in the 70s. You know, I was practically born into it. Tell people I used to have a playpen in the front office. Um, and now, so, you know, I think we are okay as far as if we can operate or not. I think we have that down. Um, but you know, if, if in my view, I think this is a scheme to shut us down 
because if you're denied the initial permit, you can't continue to operate the way this is written. If you're denied a renewal, you can continue to operate while you seek the appeal process. But if on the initial permit, if you're denied, you can't you can't continue operating and then you file for the appeals process. The appeals process takes place with another part of the executive branch in the city, a uh, group of people who nobody knows who they are. None of their information's on the city's website or anything and called the planning commission. And if you go in front of the planning commission and they deny it, then your SOL until you go, I don't know, take them to court or, or, or try to petition a judge or something. Um, but the problem is, the, uh, the funny thing is that that planning commission, those people are appointed by the mayor and by the city council, the people who wrote this legislation. Jeez. So I'm sure they're going to be really friendly towards, towards a business uh, that's trying to stay open. That's 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 a that's something and i and i'm you know i i I, this has obviously got to be a fourth amendment violation how can you tell somebody you have to let uh, let the government come in to your property to do inspections and oh by the way they're allowed to request any documentation that they want and again you have to give it to them otherwise they don't give you the permit uh and i could go through all this and they could say well we don't we don't think you have the capacity to operate. I mean, this is all ar- arbitrary, uh, you know, and subjective as far as I'm concerned. Now, yeah. why were we not so, grandfathered in? I mean, is this just something that they're doing for everybody? Or, I mean, well, I think in order to be grandfathered in, they would have to put a grandfather clause into the ordinance. Uh, and obviously, they didn't because they don't want to grandfather anybody in. So See, that's, I'm going to take a different stance here than, than maybe even you take, but I know that city, and I know how liberal that city is, and I know you, who is a staunch patriot, and it seems to me that they would target somebody like you. Someone I, someone referred to me as an activist the other day, and I never really no, thought about patriot, it like that. You're a patriot, not an activist. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that you know, I think a liberal city like that would absolutely target a business like yours, and that's unfortunate. Well, you know, I can't say that you're wrong. Uh, I'm trying. I, I've been trying to stay away from that because I don't want to. I don't want to be like the kid, you know, the the kid in elementary school, like oh boohoo, nobody likes me. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, but I was going to save this for later. But on that. Um, I have had several people come up to me uh, and tell me, uh, auto, uh, other shop owners and uh, a couple of city employees, uh, and tell me that they've got no intention on enforcing this on anybody else but us. And that's why some of the other shops who are spineless, in my view, have got, gotten up and supported this at some of the city council meetings because they've inter- on their interactions with the city have been told they, you know, they've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, but all right. But like I, I said, I, I, I'm not, I'm crazy. trying to stay away from that. I'm trying to stay on top no, of no, the full no. side of the thing. And I've already got, I've got, I've got case law already sure. uh, from federal court uh, in Youngstown you know, in, in Youngstown, uh, 2018 federal case. That basically says these inspections are unconstitutional. They are a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Um, like I said, I'm trying to avoid. You know, obviously, if this does get passed, then it's going to be go time. You know, fi- file a lawsuit time. I'm sure. trying to head it off and avoid all that if I can by keeping it from getting passed in the first place. Right. Well, if if any other shops are believing in the word of somebody that's saying that they're trying to, to screw over one guy, that's their stupidity because what's well, to say they're not too. next in like a, you know, Oh, well we won't target you. Why, why would you believe them? Well, that's not the only first that, thing. but, but what, well, and I'll get to the, the next thing here in a second. Uh, but 
Now what the heck? Uh, the next the next thing they want to do is they want to ban me from being able to use the public parking, ban our business from being able to use the public parking. Now, last I thought, public parking was public parking. But huh? the mayor, who still refuses to give me clarification on this, I think I mentioned it the last time we talked, said that automotive repair garages are a private business and therefore shouldn't have access to public parking. So what does that make every other business in the city? Does that make them a public business? I, you know, like I said, I haven't been able to get an answer out of her. I asked her three times uh, since all this garbage started. But how do you enforce something like that? I mean, on top of being also illegal and a violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, how do you enforce something like that? You know, you might going to have, what, surveillance and you know somebody's sitting here watching me 20 a day oh you parked that vehicle over there and it, it doesn't belong to you so uh you're in violation of this new ordinance yeah, or what if a customer parks on the street yeah and comes into your place are you vi are you liable for that are they liable i mean who's so liable according, then? so accor according to them and that's what i brought up uh after the first draft was issued uh the uh if it's not a problem until it's in my custody. Okay. Mm -hmm. So their argument is that our business takes control of other people's cars. Whereas other businesses, you go to a restaurant, you eat the restaurant, then you go leave. But either way, it's public parking. You can't, the, the streets, the streets of the city are held in the trust for the benefit of all of the public. Okay. Not mm -hmm. just for who happens to be in favor with the city officials at the time they enact the law. Okay. That's, that's, that's court language right there. That's right. already, you know, settled law language right there. Uh, there was a case where a police officer told a, a city official that he wasn't allowed to park his personal vehicle in a private parking space. The guy told the police chief to eat glass and uh, and they fired him. So then he sued and he won uh, hmm. in a in an appeals court in the state of Ohio. Wow. So, Charlie, that, what is the I, and I and I don't know the answer to this, but how does this case law that they're trying to get in compare to other local local cities like like Cleveland or Euclid or Tremont or wherever? Is it the same? Is it widely different? No city that I've been able to find, no municipality uh, regulates a business like this. You know, you've, you've got uh, the state has their EPA regulations, uh, the county, Board of Health takes care of, uh, you know, restaurants and stuff like that. Restaurants, you know, in order to operate, you're dealing with food, you know, they have, they, mm -hmm. they get inspected i i believe i that's what i've been told i don't know i don't own a restaurant but uh you know but that's the county no municipality and the city of lakewood doesn't we would be the only type of business in the city of lakewood where they would require a yearly inspection okay hmm. they don't even require they don't require yearly inspections on rental properties if that tells you anything and, and lakewood is full of rental properties now i'm sure they'd like to change that at some point i know they just changed uh one part of the law required re requiring inspections on rental properties but just one initial one and then that's it not this yearly garbage so apparently uh, there's no valet parking in in, in flakewood because they take control of your car so i'm assuming you know that that's not happening no and <laughs> you you see like uh, angelo's pizza that. used to do valet I parking i haven't seen them I haven't seen him do it for a while. And I'll tell you what, Angelo's parking is for crap, and people park all over the place when they go in to get that pizza, and they're, that's well, their business. And they don't funny you them, say that. What do they do with I, that place? Funny you say that because I've been trying, again, I've been trying to avoid, you know, acting in this manner and, and, and stay somewhat respectable here. But earlier today, I posted a picture of Angelo's or the corner Angelo's is on uh, with about. 25 people lined up 
outside yeah. because today's mon Monday is buy one, get one if you eat inside the restaurant. Well, on one hand, you're telling me there's no parking. But on the other hand, they get to do this. I guess all those people must have walked here. <laughs> yeah. You know? Just, just say you're LGT -esque, yeah, XYZ. Right. Yeah, I'm going to start selling vape pens and uh, medicinal weed, and, and maybe they'll leave me alone. And they'll probably leave you alone. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it if they tried to shut you down and put some kind of crap into that, that spot. Because that's what well, they would do to me. I, I don't know what's uh, going on in that town. If, if they were to try that, I mean, we'd, we'd have a problem. If yeah. if because yeah. I'm not gonna stop I'm not gonna stop working I mean I you know it, it and I don't but I, I again I'm trying to you know I'm trying not to get into the hypotheticals and everything um, but I don't think I I really don't think this is gonna go that far if it does it does but you know when's the next meeting on this uh, tomorrow night at seven thirty. So if you're a Lakewood resident, if you're a customer of ours, if you're somebody that just thinks that this is some severe government overreach, uh, if you work in Lakewood, you know, uh, you're it's open to the public and it's available for public comment. So uh, if you want to come down and make public comment, that'd be, you know, I'd be much appreciated on our end. Um, I'm trying to focus, I'm trying to keep the politics out of it. I'm trying to keep the whole liberal conservative thing out of it um, and just focus on the government overreach, the legal part of this. Uh, and like I said, there's there's plenty in the legal legal side of it as far as I can see that, that nullifies and I, most I of agree this. With you. I agree with you on trying to keep the liberal conservative thing out of it, but at the same time, that's part of that government overreach. I, I, that is what's yeah. going on. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, but you know, like I said, I think Jim says he's going to help raise your bail. <laughs> I I think that if uh, I think if we just stay stay on that topic, yeah, I, I, I think it's enough. Yeah, you know, like I said, the last thing I want to do is go in there and boo hoo and about you know, you know, you're just treating me like this because of who I am, even though it. It's true. I mean, the mayor's father uh, tried coming after us about 15 years ago when he was mayor of the city of Lakewood. So, you know, at the same time, I can't help but think, you know, if she's just trying to finish some vendetta that he started. Hmm. Jeez. Does anything yeah. possible? So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on with this because I, I think that they're, they're giving you a raw deal. So tomorrow That's night... Fair. And we, what time do you say? Seven thirty. Starts at seven thirty. If you can't come, if you go on the city of Lakewood's website, you go uh, uh, Lakewood. Dot. Uh, I'm sorry, LakewoodOH.gov slash Lakewood dash City dash Council, or just click on the City Council tab at the top of the screen. Uh, you can scroll down. You can click on that day's meeting, and then you can submit what's called an e-comment. Just make sure you follow the directions before you type up anything, because if you go to submit it and you're not registered or you don't have an account, then you lose whatever you typed up. So and, when is this uh, all going to be wrapped up? When When is the final decision going to be happening? So that's another thing that I can't get a straight answer on. Uh, one city council person tells me that tomorrow night is supposed to be the last read uh, and that they're going to vote on it after that. Another city council person tells me that, no, this is only the second read and that they're not going to vote on it until the following meeting. Um, that's the kind of, you know, shenanigans, if you will, that I got to deal with here. Most uh, hmm. On top of everything else, originally, after the first time, after it was introduced, it went to a committee. Uh, called the Planning, Housing, and Development Committee, which is made up of a couple of city council people. The first committee meeting we went to started at 6.30. Then they kept it in the committee uh, because they were wanted to look at it some more or whatever. So they had the second com committee meeting last Monday on the 12th. Now, the Friday before that, we called to find out if it was going to be on the agenda and what time it was going to start. 
the lady told us it was on the agenda and the meeting was going to start at 630. We get there at 627 and they're adjourning the meeting because they started it at six. Wow. So there was no opposition. A couple other shops said they had no problem with it. Uh, and they decided to kick it back to the city council, which now is what I have to deal with tomorrow. It's crazy Jeez. stuff, man. Well, I'm wishing you the best of luck. And I know that uh, I'm not a big fan of the uh, last place that I worked, but I did get somebody reaching out to me wanting to talk to you uh, from the oh. news department. So if you'd like to, uh, to do that, I will pass along your info. Yeah, again. sure. Um, because I think uh, the more we can spread the word, the better. Absolutely. Oh, and by the way, the penalty now is a thousand dollar fine, or uh, and up to five hundred hours community service. <laughs> wow! If, if I park, if I park a car, and if I block one of my garage doors, that's another part of this. They want, they don't want me blocking up any of the bays or the garage doors on our property. Remember, last time I said, last time I thought it said Kalani over the front door, not City of Lakewood. Uh and and on parking in front of my garage door, how many times do you guys hear about you know somebody backs a van through a door oh, or a window yeah. and, mm -hmm. and and steals a cash machine or whatever? Well, why do you think we park cars in front of our garage doors? Because that stuff's been going on for for the last sixty years. We've been parking in front of our garage doors since day one for that reason. And a couple of years ago. That very thing happened where somebody was able to break out the bottom of one of our garage doors and get in here. And they, before the cops showed up after the alarm went off, they made off with about $50,000 worth of stuff. True. And so see, that's, that's the thing, man. I mean, and, and also, how about this? You're a successful business that has illegal. a lot of cars right. to work on, and you have to have your space occupied with cars so you can do business. Well, Which according to them. Ridiculous. According to them, I should tell people, I can't work on your car. You know, come back another day. Well, that probably that's probably fine for some people. But wh what would you do if I said, you know, oh, I can't. You know, you need uh, brakes. Your brakes are grinding. I'm sorry, I don't have time to do it today. Normally, I would tell you to drop it off and you know leave it till tomorrow, or if I get some time, I'll get it in in between a couple other jobs. But now, instead, I can't. I got nowhere to put it. So now I have to tell you. You know, go drive your unsafe vehicle and bring it back. Hopefully, you don't kill anybody in the meantime and bring it back another day. Are you going to bring it back or are you going to go take it somewhere else where you can get it repaired? And, and how many times have I had to possible. call you? And how many times have I had to call you and have you tow the car some to your shop? Because again, it's not going anywhere without your help. Right. And, I mean, I yeah, screw these people. So, well, good luck tomorrow night. You got to let us know what happens. Yeah, for sure. I'll talk to you. Talk to you then. And I gave your number to uh, our news department over at the other place that I used to work for. So not my news department, but the other news department. And um, so they're going to be contacting you to uh, get the word out as well. I appreciate that stuff. Thank you. All right. I thank you for everything, my man. No problem. You guys have a good rest of your night. Well, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye, Char. Uh, it's crazy, man. It really it is. is. That's nutty. Right, leave this guy alone, man. Let him yeah. do his business. Meanwhile, we can have the Lido Lounge open doing whatever the hell they want, right. and, we can't, and he can't do legit business. Yeah, let me tell you what's going on in that place. You don't want to know. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back and wrap it up.